Okay, guys, so we've covered all the core fundamental stuff to do with compressors and compression. Um, there's a few bits and bobs we need to look at to finish off this whole tutorial, right? Shall, um, you've probably heard of these two terms, peak and RMS, okay? Now, the detector sidechain circuit of a compressor can function in either peak mode or RMS mode. And that determines how the detector sidechain circuit is going to react to signals going over the threshold. Now, RMS stands for root mean, that's an M, mean squared, right? Which basically means the average over time. So a peak compressor, if the detection circuit is in peak mode, any peak going over threshold, no matter how briefly it goes over threshold, will be compressed at the full ratio. If the detection sidechain circuit is in RMS mode, then little short peaks that go over threshold now and again will not be compressed. RMS compression will only compress when the average level over time goes over threshold. So little short blips over threshold don't get compressed. Right? So if, for example, you've got a drum beat with a ride or a hi-hat playing, and then there's a kick and snare every so often, like kick, snare, kick, snare like that. And let's say that's your threshold. If the detection sidechain circuit is in peak mode, these little peaks go whoop over threshold and they're gone. Whoop over threshold and they're gone. Whoop over threshold and they're gone. And they're spaced apart. Not much, only the distance between kick, snare, kick, snare, but they are spaced apart. And they blip over threshold, just a little peak and they're gone. Peak detection will detect and compress these peaks. RMS detection will leave them alone because they're just, they're gone too quick. They're up and they're gone, up and gone, right? But if you had something like a guitarist or vocalist performing, here's, let's say, the chorus, oh, sorry, the verse, not quite as loud as the chorus is going to be, right? But this is the guitarist or singer performing the verse, and oh, there's a peak there in the verse. Oh, there's another peak in the verse. And then the chorus comes, and the singer or guitarist now sings or plays much louder, like that. In the chorus, there's a little drop back in the chorus, then the rest of the chorus, like that. And then back to the verse again. Yeah, and then the next chorus comes, and the singer or guitarist plays or sings louder. And then back to the verse again. Okay, and let's say this is your threshold like that. Now, you can use peak detection on this type of material, and if you use peak detection, these little blips here in the verse, let's say this is the guitarist palm muting the guitar here, the louder bits in the chorus he opens up and stops palm muting so the strings ring louder. But in the process of playing his palm muted riff, he hits a couple of notes here that are loud, but they just go whoop and they're gone, whoop and gone. Peak detection will compress these, and the sustain periods here in the chorus where it goes over threshold. RMS detection is trying to emulate compression to adjust the volume based on how the human ear perceives loudness. So it will leave these little brief peaks in the verse that went over threshold alone, but it will compress where the average level is going over threshold in these parts. Right? As I said, RMS tries to emulate how the human ear perceives loudness. And the way the human ear works is, if we hear a loud sound, but it's very brief, like a door slamming, bang, like that, we don't hear that as being as loud as some sound that is the same volume level, but which goes on for longer. The human ear doesn't hear short sounds that are loud, as loud as long sounds that last a bit of time that are loud, right? It's just how the human ear works. So RMS detection will leave these peaks alone because we don't perceive them as being that loud, even though they are as loud as the playing in the chorus. But here, where the average level is above threshold, then RMS detection will apply compression ratio properly. Okay? That's, that's how it works. Now, I've got logic here. Um, what I'm showing is nothing to do with Logic, but let's just quickly look at here in Logic. I've got this drum beat coming from Logic's uh, drummer track, okay, and um, it's a sparse kick and snare beat over a hi-hat. 
Now I've got the threshold set here in minus 20. If you look at the meter on the compressor, only the kicks and snares are going over threshold. The hi-hat is not. So only the kicks and snares can trigger the compressor. Right? I've got quite a lot of ratio, 8 to 1, and a very fast attack. So if the compressor does turn down, it will, it will catch any peaks very quickly and turn them down almost instantly. Release is set to auto, right? Now, on a logic compressor, you access the peak and RMS setting for the sidechain detector circuit in the, the sidechain section. Other compressors from other companies, they might have the peak and RMS switch, if it's there, um, in a different place, right? But this is where you do it in a logic compressor. So I ran this drum beat through this compressor with these settings, first in peak mode and then in RMS mode, and bounced a file down each time. Okay, and look at the difference. Here is the compression in peak mode. Every single kick and snare which goes over threshold, even though they're spaced apart and they only last for a split second, each kick and snare has been compressed a lot because I use a lot of ratio and they're going quite over threshold, right? So peak compression has compressed these peaks that are spaced apart and the beat sounds squashed and compressed. The kicks and snares sound squashed and compressed a lot. But then I ran the beat through the same compressor with the same settings but in RMS mode and look at the difference. Here's the file that resulted. The kicks and snares haven't been compressed at all because RMS detection just leaves them alone. They're just too quick and spaced apart. So this uh, version sounds like no compression has been applied really to the kicks and snares. Okay, so that is peak and RMS detection. Okay, now hardware compressors are nearly always peak. You can get some RMS hardware compressors, so when you have this ability to switch between peak or RMS for the detection circuit, we're talking about plug-in compressors, right? You would use peak detection on drums, because you want every drum hit that goes by threshold whoop, to be captured and compressed, right? You'd also use peak compression if you're side-chaining a bass or a synth pattern or something from a kick drum. Each kick drum coming in at the side-chain detection circuit, you want it to trigger the compressor every time, even though it's just a short whoop and it's gone. So you'd use peak detection for that. Now on this more sort of flowing material, like a vocalist performing or a guitarist performing, you can use peak detection. And every peak that goes over threshold and sustained periods over threshold will all be compressed at full ratio. But if you employ RMS detection on this type of material, the loud little often, you know, occasional peaks that blip over threshold will be left alone because we don't perceive them as being that loud. Compression will only be applied when the average level over time is going over threshold on the sustained loud bits, which can perhaps sound a bit more natural. But there's no hard and fast rule. That's just how peak and RMS works. Okay? So, uh, there you go. That's peak and RMS detection.